lizard has a very agile and nimble style, and particularly effective in climbing. Hey everyone, it's Jason, and welcome back to another episode of Martial Arts Theater 3000, continuing today with the Venom Mob Countdown. As always, if you can hit that like button and subscribe, it would definitely help the channel. And if this is the first video of the series you stumbled upon, I do recommend going back to number 21 because a lot of these reviews reference previous reviews from the series. I'll put a link up above to go to the start of the playlist. At number 14, we have Legend of the Fox. This is a 1980 Venoms film, and like Sword Sane with Royal Blood and like Ode to Gallantry, it's also based on a Lewis Shaw novel this time on The Young Flying Fox. Being based on a Lewis Cha Wuxia novel again, you know there's going to be tons of sword play and lots of twists and turns. And while some of the other book adaptions I've had on the list so far have stumbled, I do think this is like a turning point on my countdown. While the plot is definitely as intricate as Sword Stain with Royal Blood and Ode to Gallantry, this one the pacing is much better. There isn't 40-minute stretches of pure dialogue and then an occasional fight. The fights are frequent this time around and also an integral part of the story. What makes this one stand out is Chin Su Ho is actually the lead on this film. And that frees up a lot of the Venoms, and you see some of them here playing against type. We have the rare moment where Lu Feng is in a hero role and Chang Sheng is in the villain role. And I have to say, for how intimidating Lu Fang is in all his villain roles, he's surprisingly charming when he plays the hero. And while Chang Cheng isn't the most intimidating of villains, he definitely does a great job on this, and his mischievous ways really helps play into this villain role. And at first, you almost think that Guac Choi could be a villain or an anti-hero, but it just proves to be that he is a victim of circumstance and is being manipulated. And this is definitely a longer Venoms film coming in at over two hours. But for the most part, it doesn't really drag on. There is a section in the middle, maybe I'd call the King of Poisons section, where there's Chin Su Ho and Man Yi Huang, who does an awesome job. She's just a great actress. And I really like this section. It, it doesn't quite have the same tone or pacing as the other parts of the movie. It kind of, for like a half hour to 40 minutes, almost just focuses on this niece and her uncle and the different poisons and the antidotes and Chin Su Ho is taking it all in and learning about it. And it's a big part of the story, but it almost kind of feels like a separate movie compared to what you've been watching so far. And the third act brings all the sections together and you have Wong Lick and Shang Shang both as villains. And as everything builds and builds, it gets to yet again, you guessed it, an amazing Venom's finale. And not only does Chin Su Ho shine in this whole film during this finale, I think he puts a cherry on top of what is probably his best role in a Venoms film. So for the plot and acting on this one, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. The scenes where Lu Fang and Guac Choi are dueling in the streets, and someone may die, but the respect they have for each other is just so high, it is just one of Chang Che's great qualities to be able to bring this out. And it's rare to see that, that level of respect and camaraderie when you're basically fighting to the death. And for the action and fighting, I'm also going to give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Now this one is paced almost perfectly when it comes to building up the plot, yet having great fight scenes throughout. It does slow down in the middle, but once it gets to the end, it ramps back up again. And there's some really neat sections where... There's like zombies that they create using this poison and they can control them with these rings and it's really neat to see and I won't spoil too much but it's definitely worth checking out. So this is usually the section where I give ways to watch the movie but it is slim pickings for Legend of the Fox. I can't find it on Amazon Prime to rent and I can't see it on YouTube to rent either. But if you have a region free player I do see a region three Taiwanese DVD of it on eBay right now for $16.99. I know that's a little complex for most people who don't have the region free players, but this film has always been very rare. It was one that I think was around in the bootleg era and I never saw it then. It never got an English dub and wasn't 
released by World Northal and shown in the 80s. So it's always been a hard one to see. So let me know down below what you guys think of Legend of the Fox. I've appreciated everyone's comments so far on the previous videos on this list. And as I said earlier, as we go up higher on this list, it gets a little harder to find lots of flaws in these movies. And they keep getting better and better as we go up and hit all these classics that are right around the bend here. And as always, thanks everyone for all the support, and I'll catch you in the next episode.